Pentecost to you all. Today is 50 days after Easter. It is the day of Pentecost, the day of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the believers to empower us to carry on the work of Christ, <coughs> to bring the good news to all the ends of the world. So today we thank the Lord for the grace of presenting the church to the whole world and making the church speak the language that every man and woman understands, <coughs> the language of God's love. We offer the Mass today for the intention of Cecilia Rovilio as requested by her for the healing of family tree and for God's blessings on each member of the previous family. We also pray for all other intentions and the silence of our heart, especially for the well-being of each and every member of our parish and our church family. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have really seen in my thoughts, in my words, in what I have done, what I've heard to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask you to bear in your virgin all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, we know that all creation is growing in labor pains even till now. And not only, but that we ourselves, who have the first fruits of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, 
the redemption of our bodies. For in hope we were saved. Not hope. Now hope that sees is not hope. For who hopes for what one sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we wait with endurance. In the same way the Spirit too comes to the aid of our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought. But the Spirit himself intercedes with inexpressible groanings. And the one who searches hearts knows what is the intention of the Spirit, because he intercedes for the Holy Ones according to God's will, the word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Come. Simon of Sirene, you know, Simon of Sirene 
was just returning from was returning from uh, uh, from the farm, and he was recruited to carry the cross. <laughs> anyway, and you discover that the readings of for the vigil is different from the readings for the Pentecost day for the mass joy day. My homily is pardon on the readings for joining the day. But I do want to share with you a few thoughts about Pentecost. From the first reading we read today, you heard the story how it all started. What happened? People came together, they wanted to make a name for themselves. They built a tower of power. And the place was called China. Isn't that curious? It's, it sounds like China, but it's spelled S H I N A R. So, what was wrong with what the people did? What was wrong is that they just want to make a name for themselves. They were self centered, they were not centered. On God. It was a godless venture. It's like we don't need God. We can do it by ourselves. When people run their life that way, it is a recipe for anarchy and crisis and chaos. Contrast this. When the story about Pentecost that we see in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. You know, you remember that story. That the apostles and the Blessed Mother, they were again, they gathered together, they came together in one room, in the other room, in the Holy City, the city of Zion, Zion, and they were in the upper room. And they were praying and waiting because the Lord had told them you wait in Jerusalem until you receive the power from on high if you try to go to preach the gospel to try to do anything without receiving the Holy Spirit you are not going to you will be like empty drums that makes the most noise you will not accomplish anything so they stayed, they waited in patience, in prayer. They were united in God. They want to proclaim God's name. They want to do God's will. And guess what? The Holy Spirit came upon them that day, Pentecost. And you know that Pentecost was a feast. I was very old. And I want you to remember this trivia about Pentecost. It's one feast that we celebrate together with the Jews. The Jews still celebrate Pentecost because it goes way back to the time of, of Moses. And what it celebrates is, is called the Feast of Shavuot. Shavuot means seven or oath. So it's the Feast of Seven Weeks. It's celebrated seven weeks after the Passover. Seven weeks plus a day after the Passover. So it makes it a total of 50 days. And what is done is during the, heart, the wheat harvest. It's at the end of the wheat harvest, and the fresh and the first fruits are presented to the Lord. You know, there will be some animal sacrifices too, um, about seven lambs and other things that were offered. But it is essentially a Thanksgiving feast, just like we celebrate, we celebrate Thanksgiving in November with turkey and dressings 
and, uh, and grains and all that. So they celebrated with grain cereals because that's what they harvest there. So anyway, <clears throat> but as time went on, because what happens in religion is that as you grow in your relationship with God, you come to understand things more. They realize that they received Ten Commandments 50 days after they had celebrated the first Passover in Egypt. And you remember what happened on the Pentecost, on the day they received the Ten Commandments. The moment God descended on that holy mountain, what was the name of the mountain? Sinai. What happened? There was smoke. The mountain was wrapped in smoke and fire because God descended on it. And God gave them the Ten Commandments. That commandment was written on slab of stone. And so, now, in addition to celebrating their Thanksgiving on Pentecost, they began to celebrate also the day they received the Ten Commandments. So that is, the two events came together. And the name Pentecost is from the Greek word for 50th. It's the 50th day, Pentecostes in Greek. So, 50th day after the Passover. So, as they gathered, the apostles, they gathered just, you know, with other people from different parts of the world, you know, people from South Memphis, and North Memphis, and Arkansas, and, um, and the East Memphis, and people from New York, everybody gathered there in Jerusalem to celebrate it. All of a sudden, there was a force of mighty wind. The wind, the noise of mighty wind. And guess what? At that moment, everybody was saying, maybe it's going to, maybe there's going to be a storm or something. It's going to rain. But it was no rain. All of a sudden, on the heads of the apostles. Now remember the apostles now were twelve. Because one guy died, he committed suicide, but they replaced and they had replaced him with another person. What was the name of the person that replaced Judas? There's another tree here, Matthias. Two people were, you know, were selected and one was chosen. It was uh, Justus and, uh, and Matthias, Justus of Anabas. So anyway, what happened? The apostles, they were afraid before because the Lord had been crucified and he rose from the dead and the ascension happened. But they were in that room. But the moment they received the power from on high, they came out in the open. And they spoke, they preached the mighty deeds of the Lord. And as they were preaching, people from Memphis, people from Arkansas, people from Tupelo, from Louisiana, and people from China or uh, Japan, Indonesia, and the motherland, they all heard them. In their language, they understood them. What happened? It's like you came to people who spoke French and you can understand them, but you didn't know French. So the church spoke language 
that everybody wants to read. What the scripture is telling us is here is the reversal of the Tower of Babel. You see, when people try to build a civilization without God, that civilization is going to be, it's going to implode. It's going to be a dead civilization. It's going to be a civilization of anarchy, of kidnapping, of killing, of bribery, of corruption. That is what happened with communism. Once the venture is gotten, that's what happened to people in Genesis 11, building the tower, the tower without God and against God. So, in the apostles, we see what happened, what Holy Spirit does in our life is the spirit of unity, of harmony, of oneness, of peace. So that outpouring of the Holy Spirit is what the apostles received. And they received it not just for themselves, but for all of us, the bride of Christ. So do we, did we too receive the Holy Spirit? We do. We do. We receive Holy Spirit when we are baptized, when we are confirmed. Now, there is something so remarkable as Peter was speaking, people thought, look, what is happening to these men? They didn't understand. They thought they were filled with new wine. Peter said, no, we are not drunk. Because look at the time, it was just 10 o'clock in the morning, you know. Uh, except people who are holy, you know, people don't wake up. They wake up tipsy, you know, drunk. So people usually would drink maybe, say if you are needy, uh, maybe with your lunch, you drink some wine. <laughs> and in the, in the, the dinner time, you also drink, you know. But early morning, people don't get, uh, are not usually drunk. So Peter said, no, we are not drunk. What is happening is what God has promised. Is in the book of prophet Job, where the Lord said, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. That is what is happening. And he said that this was thanks to the one that you crucify Jesus Christ. And when they heard that, they were caught to heart. Remember, what is the symbol that made the people, the people of God, the second session? So now when people heard that, these like they received the second session of heart. Which Moses had also already made the prophecy of it that the Lord will circumcise you in heart. But remember, this circumcision in the heart is not is not a physical thing. It's not a physical thing. It's not something you use you use knife to do. It is supernatural. God does it. It is opening the heart to hear His word. And now, because they were taught. They were touched, they were circumcised in the heart, and they said, What shall we do, brothers? Remember what Peter said. You find it in Acts of the Apostle, chapter 2, verses 37 to 38. He said, Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. So, my dear brothers and sisters, how many of us are not yet baptized? No, we are all baptized, right? So how can that become useful for us? We are already baptized. That is what is called second baptism. What is that? 
profession. Yeah, you don't do that is it wise, it's stand up to receive words, but it is for the forgiveness of sins. And confession is like taking part in sin. And also the other sacrament, the sacrament of confirmation, will receive the Holy Spirit. So my dear brothers and sisters, what do we do to receive the Holy Spirit? Peter said, repent and be baptized. To turn away from something that is not right to do. So, in other words, since we are all baptized, he says, go to confession. Don't postpone it. Go to confession when you need it. And if we look at the gospel, Chapter 14, John chapter 14, there is something the Lord told us there about how to receive. Chapter 14, verse 15, he says, If you love me, you will give my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate. So, love the Lord your God. Finally, because I know that this thing you all are wearing on your nose is very uncomfortable. So uh, I know that some of you will be wishing that I, I finish quick so that you can remove the mask. You know, so that the mask will be over quick. Isn't that what some of you are thinking? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I'm going to conclude it only. But I do want to say, ask the question. What difference does it make when you are led by the Spirit of God rather than sheer raw human will? What difference does it make? All who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. And the, the Word of God says, you did not receive a spirit of slavery, reading you back into fear, but the spirit of adoption through which we cry out, Abba. The Spirit Himself gives witness with our spirit that we are children of God. Romans chapter 8, verse 14. If we are children, then we are heirs as well, heirs of God with Christ. If only we suffer with Him so as to be glorified with Him. And then, how can we make sense of it when a disciple suffers? You know, when you suffer either pain or sickness, or loss of a loved one, or a broken relationship, or loss of means of livelihood, how can you make sense of it? The Bible gives us an answer. I consider the suffering of the present to be as nothing compared with the glory to be revealed in us. Romans 8 18. And there are sometimes in life, we are at a loss for words in prayer. What is our hope when we do not know how to pray? And, you know, we do not know what to pray for and how to pray. The Word of God tells us the Spirit too helps us in our weakness. For we do not know how to pray as we ought, for the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in speech. The groanings that cannot be expressed in speech. The mystery in this is that God himself, to whom we address our prayers, prays for us and in us and with us. So concluding, <coughs> The homily on this special day in the face of the invisible enemy, the invisible enemy of our time, you know the name of that invisible enemy, COVID-19. We make ours this prayer of invocation of the Holy Spirit. O oh, most blessed light divine, shine within these hearts of yours, and our inmost being feel where you are not, we have not. Nothing good, indeed, or thought, 
nothing free from taint of ill. Heal our wounds, our strength renew, our dryness for your due. Wash the stains of guilt away, bend the stubborn heart and will, melt the frozen, warm the chill. Guide the steps that go astray, far from us, drive our deadly foe, true peace unto us bring. And through all perils, perils, lead us safe beneath thy sacred wing. Amen.
in their soul and all the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayers. That the Lord will grant success in our capital campaign in also the Catholic appeal of our diocese. We pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our prayers. For vocation to priesthood and religious life and for active lay apostolate in our church. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayers. And for all other intentions in the silence of our God of glory, giver of all good gifts, mercifully answer our prayers. Grant that we may welcome your Holy Spirit and rejoice to proclaim Jesus is Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. They will sit. Now is the offering time. And we have a, a two baskets. One is uh, the How We Build My Church, and then the other one is regular offering. <laughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all 
and giving, them, giving you thanks, he sent the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
and save from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ.
in this case, we have consumed benefits, O Lord, that we may always be aflame with the same Spirit, whom you wondrously poured out on your apostles through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. May we sit for a moment. Today we're going to have a solemn lesson and the, the, the go in peace will conclude with double hallelujah, we we'll say go in peace, uh, the mass is ended, hallelujah, hallelujah, because that concludes the Easter season and you do the same. By Monday it will be an ordinary time. I want to uh, share with you some a little info. First of all, I want to use this opportunity to thank you all for coming to Mass. Yeah, because um, you can see that the church is still to bring. <laughs> so, <laughs> but for those who came and those who could make it, I mean, it is a, we are the few and the brave. That's what it is. <laughs> so, and um, I think the Lord has increased our number a little bit, you know, yeah, because Billy and Jamie are here today. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I could hear a lot of good singing boys coming from that direction. So, <laughs> 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 so next week, one of us is going to volunteer to be our cantor. <laughs> And then the other person will be uh, the the lecture. We better we better say it now so that you you get prepared at home. <laughs> <laughs> so today, uh, you uh, uh, these are uh, two uh, here ones in front are red. So next week is your turn. <laughs> so what is going to be is that Bonnie is going to be the first healing. Bonnie to do the first healing next week. Yeah, and then uh, Billy is going to do the second reading next week. And, and you'll be our cantor if you want. Yes, when we go back to the normal, then you know, we'll, we'll return to it. I would like to use this opportunity to um, also mention that yesterday we had the mass of uh, the funeral mass for Mr. David Wright. Uh, may his soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Amen. And I want you also to take note of this. Thank you for reaching out to Linda Anderson, our outgoing bookkeeper. Some of you, uh, some of you generously did, and some of you reached out to her to congratulate her said her part. She deserves a great appreciation from us, for she served us faithfully and sincerely. And may I also thank those who have indicated that they are interested in taking up the work of bookkeeping. We have four names already, and three uh, and then three members of the Finance Council will interview them, most probably on Monday. Now, if anybody, is it, those names, so far, I don't think any of them is going to volunteer to do it for free. You know, it's going to be a paid position. So if, if you know anybody who is interested, uh, we will interview the person. It's even better if somebody is interested to do it and wants to do it as a service to the church, free of charge. That, that would be that would be wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> but but <laughs> In the face that we don't find that one, we will be paid, we'll be, we'll pay, but we want someone who will do it good. Yes. Uh, the other thing I want to mention is that the Lord added to our number, uh, defying the limitations brought by, you know, in spite of the limitations brought about by the pandemic, uh, the membership of St. Augustine Catholic Church was increased by one. It was like a thousand. Uh, and her name is Mary Joy McConnell, a beautiful and illustrious young African American lady born in Detroit, Michigan. She's a PhD uh, in educa higher education administration and chief of staff at Cushman.
Christian Brothers University. Uh, today, Mary joins uh, the church as a full-fledged Catholic. She was former uh, non-denominational uh, church member, but she discovered the fullness of faith. She discovered the bride of Christ, and she joined us. So when things come back to normal, you see Mary, we congratulate her. I'm going to introduce her to all of us, or some of us who don't know her. I think that's all for today, but I do want to encourage those who like to pray the rosary in the evening to come her. Yes. We call Carmen. Yes. And she will connect you. If you she will connect, she'll give you the conference code number. And St. Augustine parishioners and some other people who are joining us will pray rosary, but we do it around 8.45, isn't it? Yes. 8.45 p.m. And uh, we also do it in Ovina with the Holy Spirit. Today is the last day of that Ovina. I think that's all. They will rise. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Spirit. <clears throat> Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing.